In the United Kingdom, we are very lucky to attend school for free. Now imagine a world where education is free and accessible to all, irrespective of where we are in the globe. Well, that is what utilitarianism promotes. An actional rule is ethically correct if it results in the greatest good for the greatest number. There are a range of scholars who contributed to the philosophy of utilitarianism, but there are three important thinkers which are used in classroom debate. Jeremy Bentham, essentially the father of utilitarianism, concerned with the act of the moral agent. John Stuart Mill, added but adapted onto Bentham's ethics, focusing on rules as governance. Both Bentham and Mill fall under classical utilitarianism. Peter Singer is more of a recent theorist who gives us a new outlook on both Bentham and Mill with his preference approach. So, let's begin with Bentham. In his 1789 publication of the Introduction to the Principles of Moral Legislation, he wrote that human life was dictated by the sovereign masters of pleasure and pain. Thus, according to Bentham, when thinking of solutions to a moral problem, we must pick the path that maximises pleasure but minimises pain. Therefore, his approach is quantitative. The hedonic calculus is the measuring scale Bentham provided us with to determine what action is right or wrong in a given situation. Which action will maximise pleasure and minimise pain in respect of their 1. Duration. How long will the pleasure or pain last? 2. Intensity. 3. Propinquity. How near is the pleasure or pain? 4. Extent. Does the act widely cover enough lives? 5. Certainty. How probable is it? 6. Purity. How free from pain is it? And finally, 7. Fecundity. Will it lead to more pleasure? Some fancy words, I know, right? But try to remember it with this acrostic. Did I practice every class paper fully? Duration, intensity, propinquity, extent, certainty, purity and fecundity. Mill was uncomfortable with some of the implications of Bentham's utilitarianism. He suggested that utilitarian principles could be used to make rules of thumb to live by. He took a qualitative approach. His iconic quote of better to be a Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied projected the notion of some pleasures being more valuable than others. This became known as Mill's high and low pleasures. The pleasures of learning things and of helping others are more valuable than the pleasures of eating, drinking and sex. So, how will this complexity look like in reality? Let's take Netflix. Although Stranger Things is a cool show, Mill would argue it is make-believe, thus not educational. It also encourages binge-watching. Our planet, on the other hand, is an intellectually stimulating way to spend the evening, thus a higher pleasure. Singer rejects much of this classical utilitarianism, as unlike Mill, he acknowledges that humans have different preferences of pleasure, which should be held with equal value. What you might think is a higher pleasure, someone else would think it is a lower pleasure. Let's take the recent Black Lives Matter protests and the surge of beach attendance amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We should equally hold the preferences of the protesters and the beachgoers. However, in this situation, although we all experience different types of pleasures for our good life, what counts as pain is agreed upon by everyone. However, does this become paradoxical to view a preference to go to the beach against fighting racism as the same? Singer also added that we should include the environment in our ethical decision making, since Bentham and Mill neglected this. This includes animals as well as plants. So there you have it utilitarianism in under five minutes. What strand would you choose? Thank you for watching.